Hello, I'm Paul from the Pikes Bay Marina Service Department here today inside the bilge of a boat to talk about an impeller change and some of the steps taken um, and some of the things to look for. So we're in the water. The first thing we want to do is make sure the through hole's shut. That way there we don't have a huge influx of water coming into the boat once I remove the hose off of the impeller pump. This is a gen set. We've got a belt driven impeller pump and in this application I have to physically remove the pump in order to gain access to where the impeller is. On some, inst some instances you might have a, an easier setup where you can pull the cover right on the engine and, and change the impeller while it's bolted up to the engine. But in this instance that's not an option. So we're going to go ahead and remove the pump. On this one here, the important thing to know is we've got two hoses coming from the back side. We've got an inlet hose and an outlet hose. So on this instance here, you could make the mistake of swapping the hoses. So it's very important, take your cell phone out, maybe take a photo before you start tearing into it, and make sure that you're getting the hoses in the right spot. So if you don't get... Okay, we've got our impeller pump in hand. Now we're going to take the cover off and see what we've got here. Okay, when popping the cover off, the first thing I like to do is I look at the cover, the inside, the wear plate here. Make sure that this isn't pitted, it's not deeply grooved. If you think about it, if you get some sand or some high scale water going through here it's going to eat this cover up because you've got small debris and this is just a bronze plate cover as well as the housing of this impeller here is bronze as well so I'm going to take and dump this water out here now in this instance all of our blades are here which is very good um, we don't want to have to chase blades down because of course that's more labor and it can take a long time to find all these little blades within the cooling system of this engine here. So also take notice of our cam. We've got a cam surface here and you can see where the blades are bending and of course when this is whipping around this causes a suction effect and pumps water through the engine. So look at this impeller housing. This is only bronze and it's not very strong when it comes to prying against or anything like that. Now you can zoom in here and you can see this little bit of material here and it's an o-ring surface so if you compromise any of this surface at all it will draw air in and air is your worst enemy to the impeller because it's starving for water it's not it's 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 sucking air in and so your impeller is going to be not fully submerged in water so very important here and and here I'll pop out the o-ring and you can see even better how thin this area is now if I were to come in here with a hose pick or something and pry against that this would fold over into nothing all of a sudden we're causing an air intrusion and a seal issue when the boats not running it could be leaking water um, but when the boat is running it could be sucking air into that compromised surface so the most important thing on this one is do not pry on that surface. So I'm going to take a pliers here. I'm just going to grab one of the blades and pull. Okay, popped out the impeller here. Now a good impeller when you pull it out, the blades are going to go back to the straight out position. Now you can tell on this one here it has quite a set. So the rubber is starting to decay and age and it's losing its flexibility here and on this impeller it's hard to tell probably at home where you're at watching but this one here is actually swelling up the impeller is swelling up and if you take a side view of the blades there's a dish there that dish is because the impeller is swelling up it's the rubbers getting close to you know breaking a blade off and you can tell and see on the inside we got cracking in here our rubber's just aging here and it's time to 
to take care of it. So, and on some of the impeller jobs, this keyway might pop out. Um, sometimes it's tricky or difficult. And then if you if, if the pump's on the engine, and let's just say it's in the down angle position here, and you're trying to get your impeller in, the gravity's going to work against you. Thankfully, on this one, it's stuck in there pretty good. But a little trick of the trade, you could get a little uh, grease or something, put that on the key and push it in there and the grease will actually kind of act like a suction and hold that pin in there for you. This is what the, the one we took out looks like. You can tell there's a huge difference there. Um, it's just this rubber's new, this rubber's very old and starting to decay here. And if you think about it, rubber ages with time and not use. So don't think because I've only put 20 hours on my boat in three years that my impeller is fine because that is not the case. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some dish soap. I'm just going to go ahead and pour that in the housing a little bit. First of all, it's going to act like a lubrication at initial startup because we're not going to be fully, the pump's not going to be completely filled with water. Not only that, but it helps me through the install process to get this thing to pop in there nice and easy. So this is the tricky part is to get the keyway lined up and to get all the blades going. So we're going to try and do a twist here and get this thing to start. Get all the blades kind of turning. It's kind of tricky. There, we got her popped in. Something to notice and something to see here is see how these blades are in this direction and we got this one's kind of out of place here. If you can, when you're installing this, try and get all the blades to where they're you know, going the right way. Now I recollect from when we tore this down, the blades do go this way because that's the way the engine spins. So. Watch what happens here. A good, soft, new rubber impeller, the blades will go where they, you know, need to go there. Now, well, let's just I still have soap on my fingers here, and I want to soap this up because the soap will actually help the O-ring stay in place. There we go. Now, this cover is pretty easy to figure out which way it goes. There's a there's a shape to it, so there's no way of messing this up. But a lot of covers you're going to see out there are perfectly round. So you can see they're shadowing inside the cover where the cam is here. You can see that. So if you're dealing with a perfectly round cover, just take notice of where the cam surface is and try and get the cover on the way you took it off. So like I said, this one's super easy to figure out because it's a one shape deal. Keep in mind, this is a, br a bronze housing. There's a couple of different metals there that they mix and that's why they call it bronze. Now, this stuff's not that strong. So when it comes to getting the cover bolts back in place we want to make sure we're not over tightening this stuff and stripping it out the housing because after that it's you can maybe try and tap it out to the next bigger size but a lot of times you're gonna have to buy a pump housing and that's very expensive so we just want a nice little snug here we don't have to get too crazy on the tightening of these bolts and of course we want to do a cross that way there, it's kind of like putting a, a wheel on your car. You want to cross over. You don't just go in a circle there. So there. Now we're ready to go back together with this. Kind of easy in this instance, but it's not always the case. Some of your bigger boats, it's very difficult. So, like I was saying, we've got 
our inlet hose actually comes in here and then comes out the bottom but on this one it's very easy to mix it up so it's very important to get it back together the way you took it apart so we're going to go ahead and go back together with it now on this one we're going to have to set our belt tension we've got our belt tension bolt and then we've just got a, a mounting plate bolt here so i'm just going to take and pry this back towards me and in this instance i'm actually going to use the rubber handle of this nut driver so i can pry against this without scratching any paint because i can pry harder than i can pull on this one here so i'm going to pinch this in here and push back so i can get that belt really nice and tight there okay everything's back together on the gen set here as far as the impeller goes but think about it what's the next step here that a lot of people forget about because they get excited they got it all back together and they're really quick to want to start it up but we want to make sure our through holes open so we're going to reach over here and we're also going to check for immediate leaks too because there should be a little bit of pressure coming through the bottom of the boat to push up the hoses so through hole is in the up right inline position inline is on so we're ready to go hit the key start this baby up now the other cool thing about using the dish soap is it's not harmful for the environment um, some guys use grease to lubricate the impeller for initial startup um, we're on Lake Superior here we want to keep the thing we want to keep Lake Superior clean so not only that but dish soap is very vis visible if we see any sort of soap suds coming out of the exhaust we know right away hey our impeller is pumping good water and uh, we should be okay now what I like to do after I start it is drop back down into the bilge here and you gotta really be careful but on this on this application the belts on this side so there's really nothing to grab my hand or tear my fingers off on this side but when it's running this cover plate should be ice cold so obviously I see soap suds it's running but I still want to double check and make sure everything's okay so I re-enter the bilge stick my hand on this back cover plate here and it's ice cold we're good to go put the cover back on the belt guard all that sort of stuff and it's time to go boating Hello, Pikes Bay Marina would like to extend an invite to anyone who'd like to learn more about diesel engines and maybe get some hands-on training. It'll be September 13th, 2014, and it will be held at the WITC Ashland campus here in Ashland, and we hope to see you then.